to me, it's a vulgar anachronism that we have people needlessly suffering from blindness all around the world. That 75% of that blindness could be prevented or cured, and 90% of that is in the developing world. And this number is growing. Orbis really was the brainchild of a very famous ophthalmologist, David Payton. And he had this idea of putting a hospital on the plane to show the world new technologies uh, to give people their sight back. The DC-8 first generation flying eye hospital took flight in 1982. It's amazing to see how far we've taken not only our mission, but the technology in the plane. The current plane is literally three times as big as the DC-8. The classroom was 25% of the classroom today we have on board the MD-10 aircraft flying eye hospital. What's even more exciting is it's no longer a classroom, it's a broadcast studio. I am sure when they took flight in 1982, they never thought they'd be doing live streaming through CyberSight and having people from all over the world watching what was happening on the plane. We have country offices around the world that are doing multi-year projects, whether it's building pediatric hospitals in uh, India or helping remove uh, trachoma, which is an infectious cause of blindness in Ethiopia. We have fellowships where we take the best of the best and have them work with great professors and see new systems. Today, the Flying Eye Hospital is only 20% of our portfolio. Orbis has always been a thought leader on how to combine training and technology. We have artificial intelligence, and simulation is really our future and something that we're very proud of that we spread on the world, not just on our plane, but with our long-term programs. Orbis picks partners in which they can continue what we've taught them. So uh, in some situations, a doctor would come to a, to a developing world and do a lot of cataract surgeries, but then they would leave and there would be nobody there to be able to replicate or do the follow-up for those patients. But Orbis takes a different take and it's not about the volume of surgeries that's done. It's about getting the trainees to actually do parts of the surgery under the supervision of a surgeon so that they can continue to be able to master this on their own and continue the surgeries after Orbis has left. Public health officials have forecasted that the world's visually impaired population will triple by the year 2050. That could be scary for a lot of people. For me, that's what gets me up in the morning, because at Orbis, we're already working on these solutions. We have amazing collaborations. We have the best in training, and we're bringing out the best in technology and innovation. And what we need now is to grow those resources, build on those relationships, so we deepen our impact and go to the places where our help is needed most, to the people in greatest need. You know, in today's world, you hear a lot about what a moonshot is. For me, what I want is everyone on this earth to be able to see the moon at night, to be able to see their kid's face, or be able to see their loved ones at a dinner table. That's my moonshot.